welcome back all of you nana here and then we are with the next day's program on this uh, fusion order management implementation so let me go and share my screen so here i have to open up your listing now <clears throat> you go to see you will have fusion additional docs and records are there in which you have to choose the 50th one for this training now actually that is not a correct one i have to modify it once and i modify it i will not give you the modified one now so the fiftieth one is not exactly correct the 50th one i have to modify it actually i'm not working on it actually. so yesterday i made a mistake uh, i have not collected the on and actually so we have to collect the on and also so in ebis what happens is that if you go on and see on the ebis now you go to order management <clears throat> Management. Go to the orders and return them. Go to the sales orders. So in the sales orders, reservation is not a must actually. Even if you don't have any quantity, we can very well interface it to shipping execution. But here, the default workflow needs material. In Fusion, the default workflow needs a material. So go there. The customer number is eleven forty three. You have. So if you don't have a material, it will not progress at all. So if you go into the lines region, and then here, <coughs> even if you don't have any material, we can very well book it, and then it will be going for uh, what happens? Awaiting shipping actually. So the default workflow has been so designed that if you don't have any material, it will not go there at all. So go there. I will not populate an item. Seventy five percent is zero one hundred item. Can't I will not put say ten quantities here. Now here the ATP applicable is also exactly similar to Ebus and Fusion are same actually. So if you give it ten quantities, and then if you commit, it will be going to the entered status now. And if you give a commit, it will be going to the entered status. And if you click on the availability, it may not have any material at all. And for reservation, you need the material. Remember, if you don't have a material, we cannot reserve it. You must have a physical quantity. The expected supplies cannot be entered for reservation. Actually, if you do not have it, go there and have it. It will not say ATP not applicable. Fine. This is equivalent to the infinite ATP which you have created. Fine. This is equivalent to the infinite ATP you created. And with that, you want to do what else? And then, if you go to the shipping, and then we have what one reservation column. If you try to what happens is reserve one quantity. Fine. What happens if you don't have a quantity? You will not see how much is the quantity there. So we have zero quantities now. So if you try to reserve it, it cannot do it. Fine. No, say it fails reservation. Actually, you need to have a quantity. So physically, you must have quantity on hand fails to satisfy reservation. You cannot do it now. <clears throat> you cannot do it. But we can very well book it now. You can very well book it now. If I click on book order, it will now book. It will now be going into awaiting shipping from enter status. It will be going to awaiting shipping. So it doesn't look for stock at all. Whereas by default, by default, Fusion has been designed in such a fashion that if you don't have a quantity, it will not work at all. Order has been booked, and then it will now go into awaiting shipping. And then it is for the shipping in charge and other managers to take care of it. Now, fine, whether we can ship it or not, because we don't have any quantity at all. So what they have done is the default workflow will now search for the quantity. And in the case, in my case, what I did is. I have already had the quantity, but I have not collected it. The quantity was not collected. That was a mistake, actually. So let us go there and then collect the quantity. So go there. We will now collect the quantity now. <clears throat> I have already collected the quantity. Now, what happens? This sales order will work. So collection and refresh must be done for three parameters actually. If you go to the supply chain planning and then go to the planning course. So these are the must for a default workflow actually. If you go to the collect planning data. So what you have to do is go to the OPS. You have to collect what organization now. <clears throat> Whenever you are creating a new one, the org has to be collected. The org needs to be collected, and then afterwards the items needs to be collected. <clears throat> the items needs to be collected, and then on the supply side, the on end has to be collected. This is for a default workflow. But if you customize the workflow, whatever is required only can be done. So we can very well bypass the reservation and scheduling also. So if you are using the normal workflow. What happens? These three things has to be collected. I have collected it. Now it's working. So click on it now. So uh, for a normal workflow only, you are now working upon. Now I go to the order management. We will now see about how to customize the workflow. Click on order management. 
<clears throat> so click on create order. So let me go there and then put it on fine. So it's, a, it's called K99 underscore EST. Sorry, it's, a, it's, a, it's not a ST. So K99 customer is custom one now. And then go there. It's a K99 underscore EST and then give it a tab now. We have sufficient quantity there in the inventory. So, but it will not say no data retrieve because it is an infinity DB. Only when you have GOP implemented, then only what happens, it will not show you the stock now. Fine. Whether it is in stock or out of stock, it will not show you. But for infinity DB, it will always say no data retrieval. I will not go for it. say seven quantities. No, I will not give a add, add to the line. And then as Vignesh told, if you are given the customer at the, the customer itself, if you give the shipping organization, and supply organization, if you are given it, it will automatically, there is no need for us to specify anything at all. It will not pick up in the customer's area. And what is it? Child one I have given. And go click on it. And then here, I will not give a save. And then I will not give a submit. Now, this will now progress to, what happens if you click on submit now? 379 will be progressing it to what happens here, <coughs> awaiting shipping. So, seven quantities for this now. Click on OK now. Now, go to actions and then go to switch to fulfillment view. Actions switch to fulfillment view will now come to the switch to area. So, here I go to the fulfillment lines now and then click on the do number now. The do is nothing but a distributed order orchestration number now and go there. On the fulfillment lines, if you drag it down slightly further, and then here, what happens? You click on the do number, it will now show you the orchestration plan. If you click on this, what happens? The orchestration plan is also scheduled. It is not scheduled, and then it is not going to be reserved now. And click on the question. Remember, we need to have a quantity now. If quantity is not there, scheduling a reservation will fail actually. Scheduling a response and click on the refresh. Scheduled and reserved. I have not collected the on end, that is the reason that it was not coming yesterday. <coughs> So we need to collect the organization item on on end for a normal workflow, remember, for a normal. And then you have to do the collections as well as the refresh also. <coughs> Yesterday for on end, I have not done it. So because of which it got struck actually. And this is unnecessary thing. They brought collections into picture for order management. I don't know why it's so. <coughs> no result. And then shipping has started. And then it will now be interface to shipping execution. So if you don't have a stock, it will never be interfaced at all for a normal workflow, remember. Shipping has started and then it will be going towards what happens for awaiting shipping. So it has now gone to awaiting shipping actually. It has now gone to awaiting shipping and click on it. And then here, Vignesh, you tell me in the fulfillment lines, if you go there, fine. I'm now booking on 1st of June now. If you click on that thing, what happens if you click on the supply details now? <clears throat> Mm -hmm. uh, it's now showing me the scheduled ship date as what first and then scheduled arrival date is now. Where will they are giving the transit times? Shipping date is means the arrival yeah, it, it will take the current time, I think. That, uh, now it's 10 9 and then 5 29 a.m. This difference is coming. You teach me about how to put the transit time now. Fine. Or if you ship it, what happens is arriving at the customer's location by some time distance now. You tell me where exactly yeah. now then thank you. But uh, while we are shipping the uh, order, that itself we can give the actual ship date. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. that is one yeah. provision. So it, on yeah, it will, uh, yeah. the invoice will be created on that day. Okay. Uh, okay, please click on done now. We'll have a look at it. Click on done and then come to the main screen now. So here you're saying in this place, in the second place, fine here, requested date is this now, 10, 9 a.m. Yeah, this but is it's a request but five a.m. Arrival date is now saying at. Uh, 2nd June 5 a.m. now. This, you go, you can, this I understand now. You can even give the, when you are going to ship it now. How come it is not deriving this uh, arrival date now? I mean, just make an R&D on this now. Right. So requested is coming. Arrival date is will be along with the transit times. Now, and transit times are not defined for the customer actually. So transit times will be coming here now. And we, duplicate. and we can even go and then uh, give the transit times over here now. So click on it and then here, what happens? Go to the setup and maintenance. I have not defined any transit time for the customer at all. But somewhere it is not defaulting because in one of the places they asked me, <laughs> I couldn't understand. In Saudi, they asked me this. I don't know. So they dirty tell us. Go to manage transit times. The question in the Saudi company. So manage transit times. Here we can very well give a transit time. I click on plus now. Click on it. So from our location to customer's location, actually. So if you give it, this has to default. My origin is what? Internal now. I will now put this location K99 and then lock one now. Your tab now, so no put lock one, and then here this is the customer's location now. Fine, click on destination tip is what external location, external location, and then here K99, and then give a tab now. I will not choose the destination at the site one, the one uh, which one is ours here. I don't know, 
customers is this one now and i should have given a customer name also then because of which i'm confused so this way if you give it what happens if it is picking up it's okay and then go there and then click on plus now find with it in the external location we are given now and then actions and then go to assign shipping method find already one shipping method is there and now assign it now find with it click on it and then i know how to clean it again and then here i will not say transit in three days i will not give it now find with it click on it and then afterwards give okay <clears throat> and then if it is giving then it's okay three days and go there but i am not given no, this three days will be defaulted all automatically yeah 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 now i am giving now fine and the next sales yeah, order no, i'll not give it i will not see whether it defaults because i don't know whether this external is correct or not you can't select an external location as a origin time or destination date for new transit times you must select supplier address oh god <laughs> this itself is not working actually okay it is an r and d for you how to provide the it says it's only for supplier addresses we can have the external and not for the customers address it seems got it now mm. <laughs> so you just make an r and d lesson uh, because in the saudi project when i was there for a support they asked me i told them i don't know then it's okay they didn't bother about it much okay so here it is coming in the shipping then what happens if you go there in the shipment details what happens if you go there so here uh, it's okay and then you go to actions and then go to switch to fulfillment view i wanted to ask you that's i forgot on the actually when i was in office then we'll click on it in this place in the super oh. details what happens it is now getting shifted by say 18 hours or something like that. 10 am to 5 pm 5 am on the next day so somewhere the transit time is not picking up right? so where exactly is picking up <clears throat> scheduled ship date is also oh god scheduled ship date is also shifted actually requested date is this because it is not shifted this scheduled ship date the arrival date is also coming as well somewhere the shift is still taking place now. okay <clears throat> Click on it. We'll now make an R&D on this later on. I find three seventy nine. So three seventy nine is the one. Find click on it and then we'll now go to the shipping execution. We'll now go to the shipping. Click on it. We'll now go to the shipping execution area. Then go there. So go to the supply chain execution and then go to the inventory now. We we'll go to the inventory. And then here click on it. And then here we'll now go there. You drop down and then choose the shipments now. Shipments. And then here I go to the shipment lines and then query for three seventy nine. You go to the shipment lines. Remember. Fine. Yeah, here or else you go to the shipment lines in this place. Like click on it. So you go to the shipments, not the managed shipments. Managed shipments means all shipment number must be available. Now the shipment number is not available. You go to the managed shipment lines and then put query on the sales order number. Fine, three seventy nine. And then here, this is an unnecessary field now. Fine. Sometimes it doesn't come at all. Fine. Because today is not showing schedule ship date. I click on search now. Fine. Uh, and then it will not come at all. because it's not scheduled for tomorrow isn't it fine it's not scheduled for the second second june now so here there is no blank field at all very unnecessary field i don't know why if how to remove a field on the search field fine only add fields are available here remove fields is not there vignesh fine you can tell me about how to do that now now it is on second june now fine i will not say today or the next seven days now. so this is a very unnecessary field now fine when i am given the sales order why to have this now bekar log hai click on search now. then it will come it will come because it's only tomorrow so i am not putting it as today in the next seven days now i have not set the shipping at all if i have not set the shipping will not see good actions and then go to launch pick release it will not fail click on the launch pick release pick release i am launching it i go that click on it and then it is going to fail because i have not set the shipping at all i have set shipping only for the second org and not for the first org remember during the uh, uh, transfer orders i have now set this uh, picking for the second org so you go to the tools and then click on the schedule process now it will fail actually <coughs> So click on it. No point. So release pick pay is no running. It will now go to retry mode now. See, is retrying. If it is retrying, that means what? Nothing is set at all because of it is no retry. Now let us now set the shipping for the first org. No. Click on it. We'll now go back to our what happens here? E-business documentation now. We'll now go to color diffusion. In the second one will have color diffusion. So you now go to the e-business documentation. It is also not here. <clears throat> I don't know whether I have kept it in this place also. Fine. You go to the shipping area. I might have kept the document over here. Shipping. I click on it. Now see the shipping. Not this one. Now. So here also we will now have a look at it now. Fine. So here fusion order management has got fusion order entry and then fusion shipping execution. And then the fusion shipping execution order will be having a pick release process. And then the create pick pay movement request. It will be creating a movement request. And then afterwards we have to confirm picks. For confirm picks, we must have warehouse management data access now. Warehouse manager data access. Otherwise, what happens? We cannot confirm it at all. Fine, confirming picks we need it now. Fine. Pick query will be created automatically by the movement request now. But confirm picks we need the warehouse manager data access actually. 
then after the ship confirmation process for which what happens the shipping manager data access is required and then for this process what happens is we have to run we have to set up the release sequence rule pick slip grouping rule pick wave release rule and then ship confirmation rule fine these four are the rules which you are doing now and then there will be one more document on this document no on it shipping ah uh, i have not brought that document over here so let me go to what happens in the sequel and we have uh, e business documentation the e business documentation not this one ah uh, there is one more place where i have kept the e business documentation to the most important e business yeah in the second field there so if you go to the order management and then i go to the day 4 now and then here you'll be having one shipping execution document and double click on it so double click on it so we are now going to the shipping execution document oh god this is another thing now i'm going to click on it so here when you do from ship from stock fine it will not go to what awaiting shipping now drop ship will be shipped now and then back to back order will be awaiting shipping configured order will also be awaiting shipping for a point of sale it will not go to fulfilled and then internal sales orders will be going to awaiting shipping so uh, this uh, what happens a point of sale is yet to come in uh, fusion actually fine and then configured order is available back to back is available and then back to back is now linked along with the gop license actually if we don't have a gop license we cannot do a back to back at all so internal sales order is now no it is now here in ebiz is known as ir iso here it is known as irto for which again what happens you must have a gop license actually but this is now explaining a lot on this now fine brother it is a general shipping execution document now fine brother this process is almost same ready to release and then release to warehouse and then stage to be confirmed is almost same now fine and then the shipping is also same there is no change at all as far as uh, ebiz and fusion is concerned as far as uh, the pr and pc process fine the pick release and then the pick confirmation process as well as the ship confirmation process there is no change at all and everything is there so shipping execution is pr plus sc and we are clicking on it and then there is one more document not the shipping execution the ship execution and now go to the ship execution double click on it so this is exactly not this one oh god no 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 shipping rules okay shipping rules i will not go to i will not go to omd for shipping rules no and double click on it. shipping rules this is exactly like ebiz one so there will be multiple details which will be coming and then hitting the filtering zone now so in the filtering zone depending upon uh, so many availability the packing material and the equipment availability the manpower availability the resource like power or compressor or whatever so the shipping in charge will now what happens to decide not to ship everything he will now say uh, up to the specific sales order he will not put it or the scheduled ship date let us say now it is the 1st of june from uh, what happens he will now say Uh, 1st of may to 15th of may only i will not do it fine we we have which what happens there is a shortage on this so whichever is having a scheduled ship date from 1st of may to 15th of may he will not select it or requested date one of them so he will not put some certain criteria and then filter the incoming details so if everything is available he will not put any filtering criteria at all no filtering criteria at all so that everything will be passing to the prioritization zone from the building zone it will not go there in the prioritization zone we have a release sequence rule in which what happens we are going to prioritize the incoming details because if there is a shortage of material then what is in this here now put a filtering zone and then out of which what happens the detail 1 to detail 10 are only going to be picked now fine they are now passing the filtering zone and then here we are going to prioritize let us say all the all the details are asking for item number 1 and then we have only 300 quantities only 3 details will not get the item the remaining will not get it so we are going to prioritize it so based upon first come first first served or outstanding invoice value if a person is having a very low outstanding invoice it will not pick up from ar and then it will not keep it on the top and ship on priority and then schedule ship date so these are the four ways by which what happens the incoming details can be sorted and sub sorted and then kept it over here the prioritization so let us say the prioritization zone is sorted as what detail 6 is the first then 2 next 9 next 7 etc etc later like so all the incoming details will be sorted and then kept there will not be any filtering as such you no know? the filtering zone will only filter whereas the prioritization zone will not shuffle it and then keep it over here the grouping zone is basically meant for what the easy and error free staging the people who are there in the inventory should not make any mistake and say what happens we are not going to create pixel in rule so the pick slip grouping rule is not going to come in your allocation actually fine allocation is doesn't by the priority zone so so let us say 6 and 7 are going to bombay we are now grouping into that and then 2 and 7 2 and 9 are going to madras you know it is not going to club it and then ask you to keep it together let us say we are having a shortage of this now. so once when you have a shortage of this now so let us say 300 stock is there every item is asking for item 1 100 quantities each now 6 to 9 will be given a material and not 7 even though 6 and 7 are together here what happens 7 will not be getting material because the prioritization zone has priorities like this so if there is a shortage in this order only the allocation will happen and not in this order actually so the grouping zone will not be coming so that has been explained over here you can just watch it 
and then now what happens afterwards it will now go into the inventory picking rule where the first in first out last in first out is there where we have a picking rule so the picking rule will now decide which is going to be allocated actually which is going to be allocated so the rsr and then the pr are the important thing as far as shipping is concerned actually the three rules and then go there click on it and then here what happens is me having it so let us say the middle requirement is 4000 and then we have availability of 1200 so rsr is going to sort out whichever way it sorts all of them are going to be getting metal so there is not a significant one the pr is significant pr is going to say which is going to go out first the january stock will now go out then february stock and then march stock so something is going to remain here and so the pr's recommendation becomes significant if this is the case now you have you want 1000 and then the availability is 1200 what happens this becomes a significant one so on the reverse manner if it is going to be 700 and then what happens the required is 700 we have only a lesser availability then rsr comes into picture because it is going to shuffle is going to shuffle and then say who is going to get who is not going to get now so rsr's recommendation is going to be significant if this is a scenario now for you 7500 whereas pr's recommendation becomes insignificant because what happens everything is going to go out so you you shift my you you ship the january stock or then afterwards february stock all of them are going to go out so whichever way the fifo lifo is there on the picking roll it becomes insignificant for this scenario actually and then for this scenario of 850 and then 850 fine you need 850 and then the availability is also 850 both are insignificant actually because both of them will not have any effort in whichever way you sort all of them are going to get the material and then whichever way you do the what's called fifo lifo everything is going to go out so what happens sir? both of them are going to be insignificant so here what we have to do is first of all we have to get a rsr and then we have to get a psgr and then we can even use rr now Fine, RR, and then the RR is a combination of filtering zone, prioritization zone, and then grouping zone. So by which also we can very well allocate actually. <clears throat> fine, go there. So let us now go and then create the rules. Now, fine. Afterwards, what happens? Is we have to create the shipping parameters. Now, fine. Shipping parameter also has to be created. Now, fine. So we have to create the shipping uh, shipping rule. Now, fine. Shipping rule we have to create. Now. Fine. Shipping rule we have to create. Now, fine. Go there. Click on it. We will now go and then do it. Now. <clears throat> so if you go and then see this now. So this is the one. shipping so rsr psgr pick wave release rule and then ship confirmation rule also has to be shipping parameters so there are five things we have to do now fine the release sequence rule pick slip grouping rule pick wave release rule ship confirmation rule and then shipping parameters i have not written it now fine shipping parameters also very important those five you are doing so let us now do it for the first org now fine whether i can already will not create those things first <clears throat> uh i will not go there click on it i will not go to the task now click on set up and then and remember majority of the task you executed by a legal user now security console users certain task will not work like item creation you cannot do it from security console users we had to only use via legal users now so it's preferable to go do every setup on supply chain via legal users enterprise structure can be created via security console user financial transactions can be done via security console users but supply chain you preferably go via legal users so manage fine the first one is what we are going to go for release sequence rule now. manage percentage Release percentage, sequence percentage, the rule percentage. Manage release sequence rule. Manage release sequence rule. Let's not go on that. Set it up. So the release sequence rule will be like this now. Find shipping, not this one. Shipping rules. Find out. So the release sequence rule we have to say which we have to say on which one you are going to sort now. Find it is going to sort sub sort now. Find what is the what is the priority for this? Click on it. So go there. Click on plus now. We are not going to get. I will not say EM twenty, not EM twenty. It's K K ninety nine underscore RSA release sequence rule. So the top priority is what for that. I will not make it as a sales order. And then the ascending one. And then afterwards the next sub sort, sub sort, sub sort. You can do it now. And then uh, this is the way you can do it. Again ascending and ascending. And I am not going to only be one now. I click on save and close by which whatever my release sequence rule is now created now. So a record of the value uh, RSA is already existing. Oh uh, God! So we already created it actually. Fine. I will not say RSR two. No. I will not say RSR two. I will not say even close. No. So I know what. K K ninety nine RSR two. No. So this is now going to decide how you are going to give a priority for what happens allocation actually allocation priority. Then PSGR is only for what easy and error free staging. You people who are there in the inventory should not any make a mistake and so what happens you have to club together. No. Fine. You have to group the things. Group the things which are allocated actually. Whichever is allocated, you are going to group it now. Go the pick slip grouping rule. You are going to create it. Click on that now. You now get a pick slip. Go there. Go to the manage. Pick. Pick. Grouping rule. 
So go to the pick slip grouping rule now, and you're going to get it. Thank you, Tom Plus. So yeah, I will now say it's a, what's called uh, K99 underscore PSGR underscore two now. I will now say order number. And then within which, what happens, I can now say customers. Fine, subsort, subsort, I can order and you can group it now. So normally it will be order number or customer. Fine, but I say close. So discuss with the end customers and then accordingly decide your PSGR. This is only for easy and error free staging. It doesn't come into the allocation. Fine, allocation path, it doesn't come. Fine, click on save and close. So the PSGR is ready. Fine, click on done now. So having done this, what happens, you go there. Now having done this, we will now decide our shipping rule. Fine, and then uh, what happens, uh, manage shipping, ship confirmation rule and then shipping parameters. And then this also release rule also. The release rule I will be using it later on. Fine, that will not go on until the release rule. Also. Five things you have to create now. Fine, that release percentage the rule percentage. It's called pick wave release rule. In the EBS, it is known as only release rule. Fine, here it is known as a pick wave release rule. Fine, go to the pick wave manage pick wave release rule. Fine, that click on it. Will not give plus. So click on plus. So here I am now going to do all the three. The pick wave release rule is for a combination of filtering zone, prioritization zone, and grouping zone basically. It is a combination of all. I will now give what happens. I will now say it is a K99 underscore uh, RR underscore two now. Release rule. Release rule. Score two now. Find what I on it. Shift from organization. I will now say it is a K991 uh, now. Find what I on it. And then you can go there. Order type is what sales orders. I will now leave the remaining field. So the filtering zone. What I will do is, it is the dates where I am now going to make it as null now. Fine. So that means what? Everything will now pass through the filtering zone. When I am creating RR, normally what happens? You may even filter it out. Fine. It's not filtered. So otherwise, what happens? You can hold it. So start on, end on. What happens? It will say start within. You will be using the start within. So you know, start, start within. I will now put as what? Let us say two days now. So which is going to start within the next two days, we are going to pick up now. Fine. End on or end within now. And then give the, you will now say three days. So whichever is going to start after two days and then ending in three days, you're going to pick now. When you use this rule. Fine. So let us say today is Monday is the first day. And then uh, number two, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Let us say today is Monday. That means what? Whichever is the, having a scheduled ship date on Tuesday and then ending on Wednesday, you're going to pick now. And tomorrow if you do it, whatever is starting on Wednesday and then Thursday, like that what happens, it'll be coming. So this is a very famous method of what happens, uh, scheduling it now and picking it actually. Fine. Uh, so I'm not choosing anything at all. Fine. Well, I can leave it. So we can even do the what is called filtering of the incoming details based upon the number of days you will now say zero and two days zero and two days means what today whatever has to go tomorrow whatever has to go and the day of tomorrow whatever has to go will be eligible for picking actually and then if you want to do a backdated filtering you'll now say minus two to plus two and it starts within is what minus two to plus two fine there are multiple methods of what happens to filtering the criteria so you can do it now and then ship on priority, you can do it now. Fine, the shipping method, all these things, I'm not leaving it blank now. Fine, you can even filter on these details now. Dates, shipping, and item, you can very well filter it now. So, having done this, I will now go to the options now. In the options, what I'm going to do is I will now populate your RSR and then the PSGR now. Fine. On the release rule, what happens? You go there in the options area, you go there. Pick from sub inventory, I will now leave it blank. The picking rule will now decide. The picking rule will decide from which from which sub inventory I have to pick now. Fine. So, there is the power of FIFO and LIFO allocation now. Fine. So we can very well do it. We can leave it blank. Go down. And then the release sequence rule, I will now put K99 and then give it app. I will now choose the number two now. Click on it, okay. And then similarly, what happens? I will now put the pick wave release rule from K99 and then give it app now. I will now put the second PSGR. And these two are done. So these two are now done now. Fine, go click on it. The prioritization grouping rule now. And then once when it picks, what happens is that after picking it, we have to confirm it also. Fine. By pick confirm. So pick confirm, you need to have a warehouse manager, uh, data access actually, otherwise it will not work. So in this case, what happens, you go there, I will not say auto, can, auto confirm. Pick. So in which case, what happens, it will be confirming automatically. This is for trade compliance, and then here, the staging sub is a must now. Fine. If you don't give a staging, it will not work at all. So I will not put one of the sub as a staging sub-2, I will not put as a staging sub unit now. And if you want, the staging sub is not. So create shipments, it will be creating a shipment for ship confirmation actually, automatically it will not get. And then the shipment creation criteria is what, across orders, normally across orders, you cannot do it. Automatically packages for packing, fine. This is a packing. And then you can now see what are the documents. This pick release documents. Here we have a problem. My two open students have already reported. So they created the document and then it is not exactly picking, printing everything now. Fine. Uh, the documents that will be printed. And then uh, if you have done anything, you please tell me later on. I will not discuss with you. Fine. That is not picking, printing at all properly. So you are saying that the pack slip is not getting printed. Fine. The vehicle loading sheet is not getting printed. 
fine. If there are so many things which he wants and then it is not having. Both the pixel list documents as well as ship confirmation documents, they are, we are having a problem actually. You don't know how to do it actually. We'll uh, come to that a bit later. No, fine, click on it. So it's not done. So we'll now save and close by which whatever my release rule is now completed. A release rule is nothing but a combination of what? All the three now. So filtering zone, prioritization zone, growing zone. So the RR will now cause the filtering zone and then the RSR and then the TSGR also. So RSR, so one, two, three, the third rule is now completed. Now fine, click on it. And now complete the third rule. I'm gonna click on save and close. The third rule is complete. Now Shipping parameters has to be defined. Okay, now, now we have defined the shipping parameters. Okay, click on it. Ship parameters. <laughs> Is org specific actually? I'm going to click on it. I'll not put org. Click on it. I'm going to give OK. The shipping parameters we're going to define. So go there and then give it everything. And then what happens? I'll not put the ship confirmation rule. Fine. Key 99 and get no Ship confirmation rule. So it's not, it's not, this is not a death. So the shipping parameters must be defined only after the ship confirmation rule is created. Fine, give a cancel now. Let us now create the shipping confirmation rule and then finally come to the shipping parameters. We will not what happens, do it and then after all, we know. Ship confirmation rule, we are created now. Afterwards, shipping parameters, finally. Ship confirmation rule. So we are going to create the ship confirmation rule. Now. So click on the manage ship confirmation rules. We are going to create it now. So yeah, now you have plus now. I will not put the two now because I already have it all. I know that. So K99 underscore ship underscore confirm underscore two now. That's what I'm putting in now. I know that. So it is a requested quantities and ship quantities will be coming to it a bit later now. Fine. Do not defer it. This is equivalent to what happens? Your interface trip stop now. Fine. If you don't defer it, the shipping execution will be interface to order entry immediately now. Otherwise, we have to run this IDS manually. IDS has to run manually. Fine. Go that click on it. So I'm not doing it now. Fine. And then override shipping method if you want, you can put it otherwise you can leave it as a number. Click on save and contact. So my ship confirmation rule is almost similar to what we have anyways. We'll be having more discussion on this uh, while we do advanced shipping actually. You can now, we are now beginning with the requested quantities. We'll now go to the next one later on. So ship confirmation rule is now done. I click on save and close. So the ship confirmation rule is now done. Now we go for shipping parameters. So go there, manage ship parameters. Shipping parameters. Command shipping parameters, and then this is the org of K91. So I will now populate my two second one now. the second one now. So weight and volume are must now. This is only for what happens your uh, other uh, transportation management. But if I try to give a save, it will not throw an error again. And if you give a save, what happens? It will not throw an error. So the staging subunit, and then the this thing are also this is also mandatory. Actually. Weight and volume are also mandatory. Staging subunit, I will not put the sub two now. I will not put the sub two as a staging now. Go there. So no, go there. The system creates a pack automatically. It creates a, what happens? A, the category of pack automatically. In this one only, we have to add all the things. Right? There is something which you know, people are saying there's so many things. The bill of lading is also getting automatically created, and the commercial invoice is also coming up automatically over there. No, fine, go there. I'll now give automatic pack over there. No, fine, go there. These two are mandatory. You'll not see this no, fine, go there. So this is all okay. Fine, go there. Release sequence rule. I will not drop down. I will not choose the second rule now. And then here, I will not choose the first or second rule. And then here, I will not say what. The pick confirmation, I'm going to make it as automatic. And we already made it automatic in the release rule now. Here also, what happens, we'll now make it as automatic. So create shipments is not done, fine. That will be creating a shipment also automatically. And then uh, express pick, fine. Uh, I have, I've forgotten this. I have done it actually. Fine. N4 shift is now come. So this we have to analyze and then I will let you know. Fine. Express pick, I have forgotten that. It will automatically pick, I think, probably uh, quickly. I have forgotten that, but I have done it actually. This is for release management actually. Fine. The shipping group attributes is uh, for the release management module now. <clears throat> go up now. And go there. Enforce shipping method. So do not enforce it. Otherwise, what happens? It will not ask you again and again the shipping method actually. Don't enforce it now. Enforce packing. Fine. Go there. Consolidate back order lines. And then it's okay. Required on pack slip all. Fine. We need everything on the packing slip actually. And some of the people in the packing slip, everything is required. So on the printing of the documents, my students are having a problem actually. And go there. Want it. So ship set behavior. And go there. Ship set behavior is also not fine. I'll not say it's for information now. And then this weight and volume is also required. If you give a save, what happens? It will not throw an error on this one. See, see, weight is required, volume is required. This is only for transportation management, but you have to give one of the one of the classes the weight and volume. Fine, go there. Click on it. I'm going to give it now. <clears throat> Even though we don't need it now for our real shipping, and then here 
uh, this is also required now. Ship insert behavior, if you don't give anything blank, what happens? It will not work at all. One of them must be all sort of fine. The ship set has been the what happens? There are three ship sets. One is what ship set, arrival set, and the fulfillment set. I think ship set and arrival set has come. Fulfillment set is yet to come. I think we will uh, have a look at it a bit later. Now. Fine. Uh, one of them is set to come now. Fine. Arrival set. The fulfillment set I think is set to come now. I, they told me that in 20B they will be doing it now. Fine. I don't know what is the version of this now. No about application. <clears throat> it's not 20A only. So in 20B, they told me that fulfillment set will come. Anyhow, we will not see that. In 20A, the ship set and arrival set will definitely work. As the name of will not see this. Click on it. And then now shipping parameters are now defined actually. And then click on it. And then click on save and close. It's not done. Now all the five things are now done. Fine. All the five things are now done now. Go there. Uh, shipping rules. No, no, no. So here four is written. Release equals rule, pick slip grouping rule, pick wave release rule, ship confirmation, and then shipping parameters actually. Shipping parameters, the final one. So all the five are done. So the shipping is now fully set now. Now, if I launch the pick release, fine. If I don't launch the pick release, what happens? Even the confirmation picks is also automatic, and then what happens? It will be going to stage actually. Fine. Confirm picks is on in the ship confirmation rule or somewhere else, no fine. So since confirm picks is also on, it will be going to the staged area now. Fine. Let's click on it. It does not do this. Fine. Space. And then you go to the manage shipment lines and then go to actions and then go to pick release now. Fine, click on the pick release. You'll be doing uh, picking and shipping separately later on. Now, fine, go click on it. We'll not go and then have a look at them. How it's called you are registering now. I'll not give it done now. And then we'll go to the scheduled process and then have a look at it. This time, what happens? It'll pass now. You go to the what's called tools and then you go to the schedule process. This time, it'll not have go for a retry actually. It'll be getting passed. The pick way release will be not going. And this time, it'll not pass. Because all the five are now set now. Fine. So pick release rule is not completed now. Fine. This is where my students have a problem. Apply document set rules and then output preferences actually. Uh, I don't know. They were saying that so many things uh, they have attached it through some uh, sequences and then uh, it's not getting. So this, is a, uh, this document was failing for me. Whatever they have attached is not getting printed actually. Upon picking, whatever they want to pick it. So later on, I will not discuss with you now. Fine. Pick release document was uh, basically. Uh, so if you go to the pick slip report, it will not tell you what it has picked actually. The print pick slip report is not coming. So it will not tell you what it has picked actually. Click on it now. So this is now succeeded. Fine. Click on it now. Fine. Here, we, the technical team will be customizing this pick slip report in whatever way they want now. And then what happens? It will be basically published. Fine. Republishing. So this is the job of a technical team now. Fine. Click on republish. And then it will be doing it. Because in many companies, they will be doing the, what happens, the report on a custom, on a, a prefabricated, pre-printed form actually. So go there, click on it. I will not click on the wheel icon and then click on export to PDF now. It will not show you what exactly the pixel. So click on save now. And then you're going to have a look at it now. <clears throat> report completed. What is So click on show now. And then I click on the PDF file. So you can see now. So this format is varying from customers to customers. So it knows the pick slip number. The pick wave number is now shown fine. Whether why does pick fine? The confirmed on pick status is confirmed now. The pick confirmation has also taken place because we have now made an automatic confirmation in some other setups now. Fine. So uh, the pick from the locator fine. Whether it is not it is not locator. It is actually a sales order number now. And then what is the shipment quantity? And now, now see these are all wrongly coming now. Fine. Whether the ship to quantity has to come seven here now. Fine. It's not coming here now. <laughs> so this has to be properly formatted by the technical team actually. In every company, what happens is they'll be having a prefabricated form for the big sleep report. So once when the system has now printed it, the inventory boy will now take it up and then he will now easily pick and then bring it to the staging area actually. So that is where it is. So here, pick sleep report is okay, technical doing, but the confirmation documents, my students had a problem. They say that it is not, it is not printing whatever I want. Actually. The pick list documents, it is giving a lot of problems for them. <clears throat> the pick list documents, what are the so that we have to later on, Vignesh will analyze and then tell me fine. How how you are doing Vignesh for your existing customers? Are you giving anything, any any, any documents for them upon picking? Yeah, so, we are uh, giving this uh, a pixel report only. A report only. No, uh, yeah. uh, no documents. Pixel report. Yeah, yeah, okay. No documents. Yeah, yeah. Pixel report then. And we are using only standard document only. Uh -huh, uh -huh. That is why we cannot compare any African implementation actually. <laughs> In Africa, that is not much of a challenge there basically. So it is not done. So here, if you go there and then see this now, fine, click on refresh now, fine, I'm going to refresh it now, fine, click on refresh now. So if you refresh it, what happens, you know, see, it's all picked now, fine, click on it. So it is not, what happens, 
it is not awaiting shipping it now go to awaiting what happens you can now see now we have to ship it now we have only picked it we are not shipped it actually we had to ship it so it is not still still showing only awaiting shipping now i'm checking on refresh it's not showing us only awaiting shipping so only uh, it will not so pick actually it has to show me pick you know see whether it's not showing us it is not showing you only awaiting shipping now it is not showing me pick i have got the order lines and then along with the fulfillment lines and then look at the orchestration plan now uh, fulfillment lines or no go there click on it it doesn't show the pick na fine here i think so it is not showing the pick at all it is already picked so it is not show, showing only awaiting shipping <clears throat> i don't know that long in the main line will not see whether it will not show is picked or not somewhere i have seen as picked here i click on done and then come out of it in the main line right it will not show me as refresh it now it will not show me as picked now Ah, no show. Minus two lines. Here, what happens? You go there, and then you give a save and close. Now, find three seventy nine is the order number. Save and close. Now, it will not show you a stage actually. Three seventy nine will be stage actually. No stage. And then the system also created a shipment number because we are now seeing an auto create shipment actually. It is no stage. So stage means what? The picking is complete now. I will now click on the shipment number, and then I am going to perform a ship confirmation. So here, what happens? I am now going to perform a ship confirmation. So click on it. And then here I will not click on ship confirmation there. So click on. I have not shown that whatever the shipping method uh, is not uh, mandatory actually. When the tick mark I have removed now, it will not ask for. When click on ship confirmation, it will be performing a ship confirmation automatically. So it is now giving a warning now. Fine. Ship confirmation request has what happens has got the following value because the weight and volume has not been defined. So it is exactly similar to what we have in EBS now. Right? So we have defined the weight and volume. That is only for transportation management. But it is just a warning. You can ignore the warning and then click on yes. Now it will now go to shipped. Now, now a concurrent called ITS will be running, and that is known as what send shipment uh, advice. Now, the send shipment advice is equivalent to uh, what happens your ITS actually in EBS now. Click on it. So, will now run it now. So, send shipment advice will now interface the shipping execution into order ID. So, once when it is done, what happens? Once when the send shipment advice is completed properly. <coughs> so, what it will do is it will now go there. And then it will now send shipment advice is now running now. <clears throat> Ship confirmation documents and the uh, uh, pick confirmation documents had a simple big problem. <clears throat> Go there now. Send shipment advice is running. As soon as it gets completed, the sales order will be updated as what shipped now, and then it has to go to awaiting billing actually. The sales order will be going to ship and it will go to awaiting shipping. Sometimes what happens the send shipment advice will be landing up an error now or. it may not complete at all so in which case what happens you might have even deferred it also you might have even deferred it so what happens it will not run now so in which case what happens when you want to run all the send shipment advice we now see this it has not succeeded you know how a look at now find send shipment advice you now go there and then go there is there anything no output is there fine you know how to look at the output parameters only this is a file so go and save it now and click on show and then open the log now oh god it's too much i cannot read it <laughs> It's a big, big one. I thought that it's a PDF file. If it comes, it will be nice. Now, fine, it's not coming. Now, now go there, go to the order management, and then refresh it. Now, fine, it will not say ship, and then it will be going to awaiting billing. Actually, click on refresh now. So it takes some time. Fine, it is not shipped. It can't ship now. So it is not shipped, and then it will now go into awaiting billing now. Now we have an error here. Now, fine, click on it. It will now have an error. So three seventy nine has now landed up an error. Now, fine, go there because what happens? The create billing lines has gone there because the error is not set. So only when you set the AR, what happens? It will be interfaced to AR, and then we'll not get any noise actually. So fail to validate it. Now find new row. Find where. Now we are going to create an invoice, and then we are going to make an RMA also. We will now make a check whether uh, the item attribute is now proper or not. Find whether click on duplicate now. The returnable is enabled or not. Find. I don't know whether I enabled or not. Click on it. We'll now go to product management, and then I go to the product information management. I have to enable the return now. Find. Click on it. We'll now query for the item. So go to the browse items, manage items. Browse items, manage items will be having a mandatory field. Browse items will not have any mandatory field. Now I will click on it. I will now say it's K99 underscore STD, and then give a search. We will now see whether the returnable is enabled or not. I will click on it. I will now go and then what happens? I will now go to the K91 R now, and then click on the underscore of this now. Click on it. <coughs> go there. Here in the manage shipment lines also, what happens? It is not already shipped actually. We want to ship. You know that. So you go to the browse items, and then here you now go to the specifications, and then see in the sales order the returnable is enabled or not. You go there, click on it. 
and then here returnable is no no fine it is a master control attribute is not allowing so let me enable it and then what happens we will now go ahead for the air setup so fine it cancel now so let us now enable it now i will now go to the master control attribute is a master org i am going to go there the center one is a master org so here i go there edit it and then change it to yes now so click on the specifications and then you go there so here what happens you go there and then go to the sales and order management <clears throat> and then here i will now make returnable as yes the item is returnable now fine we will now make an rma also as soon as we complete the invoice part now click on returnable yes click on what happens you save and close now so it is not done now fine go there click on it now we have to collect it and then send it to the what happens your uh, planning area actually otherwise it will not work out so this is a, a really a very horrible one now and click on it and then you go to the home icon the collection process they have enabled it and go to the supply chain planning and then go to the planning course so an item attribute has been changed now so you go to the collect planning data normally remember we have to collect the org item and then quantity now go there. let change is okay fine go there. here only item need to be collected now fine not the on and on the thing on it so item has to be collected org is already collected item has to be collected now org is already collected and the supply data on and is not related otherwise we have to collect it. so we will now go for a next change will be somewhat fast now fine go there click on it so go there click on submit so only when an item is returnable what happens we can return it no 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 the orders so here in the sales orders is upon manager orders Here, what happens? The return button will be coming only when what happens if it is returnable. No, as soon as it is shipped, we can very well return. It is not coming yet. So we have to run this concurrent, and then afterwards, what happens? We have to run what one more concurrent also. We have to run the refresh and start. Go there, click on it. We'll now go to what? We'll now go to the tools, and then go to the scheduled process. Now we have to run what? The refresh and start also. So we are now running a net change. So net change will not take much of a time. so the final concurrent is what you have to get it as what as a delete the stage data under the final concurrent and afterwards we can even run the what's called your refresh and start order promising server actually there are two unnecessary overheads which they have brought in they are saying that they are going to modify it but till now it is not it modified actually whereas shipping and then uh, the item attributes are linked together actually say for example i have 100 quantities if i want to ship let us say uh, 120 the sales order itself will fail actually but what happens we have now interfaced it to what happens uh, bypass let us say the reservation and scheduling then it will not get interfaced to shipping and then there if you populate the item let us say i want a 120 we have only 100 and then after it has got interfaced to shipping and then if you populate the inventory with another 50 quantities the shipping will sense immediately there is no need to refresh and collect shipping will not sense immediately whereas your what happens sales order will not sense 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 at all for which what happens immediate connection now you click on the schedule new process and then here i will now say refresh and then start and then start and then click on okay now <clears throat> i will now collect all the items now and there is more than sufficient item and then click on submit now fine because the item has only got changed now fine whatever is changed we are not running it so this process will be somewhat fast if you do it specifically but sometimes it doesn't work you may have to what happens collect everything and then refresh everything also have you encountered this problem ignish and sometimes only when you collect completely it works actually <laughs> i have seen it in the training instance actually man by selectively collecting and refreshing it is not working at all most time you have to collect every uh... Oh, all everything. the all the all the things now find the, the supply side and then the demand and supply side you have to collect everything and then do the refreshment actually Uh, it's is the is the same case in production also na i thought that in yeah, the same case only mm. so if uh, we recently we have a change in customer must i think so mm. so i have run only uh, the selected uh, things but it uh, doesn't work ah. so next time i run everything and it will take uh, so much of time see everything in a big instance let us say we have one lakh item it will take a long time actually one of my students says it takes around 2 hours to collect he has got 1.5 yeah, yeah. lakh items and then when you collect everything it takes 2 hours to collect and then we are impatient now that's what is collection takes a long time when you have a huge implementation actually for you maybe 4000 5000 items it's okay but if you have 1.5 yeah. mm -hmm. lakh items 2 lakh items if you do a collection all right it has to targetively collect only certain things now net change has to work net change is not exactly working there is a bug actually oracle is also accepting it 
when i raise sr they will say why don't you go for a targeted for all are yaar how can we go find you got so much of item and then every time you are running it it's a heavy one for the system actually now will not go there and then query is not fine go that connect will not go to the manager orders the, the return button has come 379 let me query it now fine click on done now and then here what happens go there 379 let me query it now sometimes what happens you have even restart now and let me connect now now see where it comes up now the return button has come so previously it is not come now i am going to perform a return now and let me connect i am not going to perform a return so as soon as it comes shipped and then if the item attribute is returnable and then if you have done the refresh and collect fine Collect and then refresh. Then only whatever the refresh return button will be coming. Click on return. I'm going to return it. I'm going to drop it now. We can even if multiple lines are there, we can even return all now. Fine. Click on return. I'm going to return it. And one line. I think it is not closed. Not necessary. Not necessary. We can close the header separately. Remember, the header can be closed. And then once when it is invoice, it will be closed now. Once when you send it to the interface tables, what happens? It gets closed. Now I have not set it because AR is not set actually. It will be doing it tomorrow. So we'll not set up the AR. And then the status will be code closed only when you are sending it to the interface tables of AR. So AR is not set. We'll be setting AR and then afterwards lines will be closed. Header can be closed with a concurrent actually. They close the header with a concurrent. Uh, that's what they told me. Fine. Uh, you are also doing it. Now header closing with a concurrent, isn't it? Header no, but uh, uh, I didn't uh, do the, the okay. program. Because my yeah. student told me my. Because I know that uh, we have one program to run it ah. to close all the orders. Ah. Ah. Otherwise, it will be yeah, processing yeah. only. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I think yeah. Suresh has done once. Can you ask him and then get the concurrent? Because I also forgot. It. My student told me, but I forgot that now. Okay, okay. okay. You okay. ask and then let us let all of us know. No, I forgot that. My student told me, but I forgot. That. So click on return now. I am not going to perform a return now. Click on return. So return I am performing it. Return type is what? Either cancel the item or return for credit or return for credit and return. Now. So he is cancelling it. Also, is possible. Now. In any case, it is not possible. i will now go for return for credit only because uh, return for credit and return fine go that so return for credit and return it will not work actually fine because the uh, credit part is not at set now fine so let us now choose it doesn't matter fine return for credit and return item i will not i will not populate the item now fine go click on it i will not populate whatever there <coughs> the item is damaged is not doing it now go click on it and then what is the quantity he is going to return now fine go that click on it i will not say not seven he is now returning back two now fine go that click on it we will now create a return order now this will now create a return order fine click on order create order so it is now going to create a return order now so click on it create an order so the return order is now getting created now for that so it is now created fine go that minus 4 quantities one is now coming minus 4 as it's fine go that click on it so it is now populated it shows you the original order number now and on the return number it doesn't show what happens in the return order on the original order number it is not showing the return order i they are asking me on the 379 this order is not shown fine give a save now fine it will now come as a return order And again on the numbering part, please find out how to number it now. Uh, if you go and then query three eight seventy nine, three eighty will not be shown. But three eighty will not show the three eight seventy nine. They wanted this. I don't know how to do it now. <laughs> so can you tell me how to do that? If you go and then query three seventy nine, it will not show you the three eighty at all. So go to that. I will not submit it now. I am going to return it now. The quantity show is not showing minus four. Fine, click on submit. You are now going to return it. So click on submit. Now we are returning it now. Fine, go to that. Click on okay. So 380 is now getting processed. Now, if I go to actions and then what happens? Switch to fulfillment view. So if you go to switch to fulfillment view here, the fulfillment it will not show anything at all. It will not show on the returns area. I click on the returns. It will not show this. I click on it. You go to the returns area. It will not show there. So you go there. And now we will now have a look at it. Fine. Returns it is not showing. Item is damaged. Fine. It is not started now. Fine. Click on it. And then click on refresh now. So you're not showing the fine. There will be order orchestration number coming in this place now. Fine. For a fulfillment lines, what happens? It will be coming somewhere here. For the return line, it will be coming over here. Fine. Click on it now. Fine. We will not take another five minutes and then try to complete the return now. Fine. Uh, we will not try to complete the return. Eleven five. I will not complete it. Okay. Return receipt is not coming. Fine. Over. It is not started. Then what happens? It will not be awaiting return actually. Now go there. It will be awaiting return. So we'll now in the meantime, what about right click and then duplicate it now? We'll now go to the inventory and then try to return it now. Fine, we'll click on it. Three eighty is order number on which order number we're going to return it. Now. We'll go to the manage shipment lines. There is it. Manage orders. Yeah, this one. So click on it. It will now go to awaiting return now. Fine, awaiting receiving now. Fine, it's now going to awaiting receiving. Fine, we'll click on it. I will now go there. Three eighty is awaiting receiving. Fine, we'll click on it. I will now go to the supply chain execution and then I go to the inventory and then I will now query on the RMA number. Now. Click on it now. Then I'm going to query on the RMA number. 
so go there if you go to the what uh, go to the what is the receipts no you find go to the inventory you know go to the receipts no find receipts and then here receive expected shipments is rma no so rma number is what 380 38 and then give a tab it has to pick up the number automatically it's not picking up the number empty console empty console so we are now doing it now yes any questions <clears throat> click on it i'm not going to receive it now so rma is now getting received right click on it receive i'm going to receive it now so two quantity i'm going to receive it now so the show receipt quantity is not enabled because we are now uh, enable the blind receiving because of it is not showing and go to click on it i want to put the quantity as two now and then you uh, will now go to the receiving now find go to click on receiving and even go to the inventory also directly so click on create receipt now find click on create receipt uh, uh, click on create receipt you know when it is the gate now so this is standard receipt routing is rma number now because of which what happens is now going as receiving now go there so click on it and then we will now populate the ship number the, the customer has sent all the packing numbers shipping method etc available number bill of lading everything can populate you can take a report on this now find that click on submit by which what happens the grn number for the rma will be created now so we are not doing it fine 1017 of the one and let us now deliver it to the inventory fine click on done now we are going to deliver the inventory so here what happens we will now do a put away receipts now fine click on the put away receipts this has to be on a what happens expense sub inventory because it is a defective one now 1017 so since it is a defective one it will not should reflect on your asset actually so we will now create we have to create a expense report expense sub inventory i am not doing it fine click on put away i don't have any expense sub inventory i am not receiving it on the asset itself if you do like this what happens your material audit will be considering you actually go on the sub inventory here we have to put a expense sub inventory also oh i have a expense sub inventory also fine go there click on it and put it on the sub because this is a defective item and so what happens it should not reflect on the company's actual asset value i will now receive it on the expense inventory rma has to be put away on the expense inventory and go there click on submit now 1017 is now submitted in e base upon completion of this the sales order gets updated uh, here what happens we have to send this with a concurrent now and if you go to the manager orders it will not go there this is written actually go there it will not be going as a return it has to come as return it won't go so we have to run a kind of concurrent to interface it like what happens we have its for interfacing your shipping execution to order entry here it is a send ship and advise and then here for a return what happens i have forgotten the concurrent oh god what is the concurrent name here <laughs> uh, send return transaction or something like that send something send return transaction find it out find it forgot the concurrent actually you remember you remember it what is the concurrent for this now fine only when you run the concurrent what happens it will be doing it now send receipt confirmation yes so send receipt confirmation will now communicate your rma value to the sales order actually send receipt confirmation the most fine send receipt confirmation for rma is what happens go there i will now populate the organization k name in one and go click on it and then uh, this is not required it's a source system drop it down we uh, are what is the source system it must be order entry na no? i think fusion order orchestration and planning i think is the one because the mandatory field you have to give it now and then receipt number if you want i will not put it i'll not see 1017 is coming i'm going to see i will not make it a 1017 is coming actually so if you leave it blank it will not do it. send it for all all the r g r m a section so is document number what is this 380 okay fine it is now saying the return order right so it is the order says on this one so if you leave these two things blank it will be doing it for all now fine click on submit now so by which what happens the system will be communicating the rma information into the sales order malcolm do we need any workflow background process for uh, communicating it back to order entry in ebus upon receipt now workflow background is not required now not required now not required now okay not required here must we do it it will automatically update this automatically update the sales order upon receipt now okay fine upon rma receipts it will be updating the sales order automatically so here what happens it will be doing it now but when you have the rma with the approvals i think somewhere we will be running the workflow background process or something like that i'm not sure about it something i have forgot about so the send receipt confirmation upon completion only will be updating the sales order upon the return now and it will be ready for creating a credit credit memo now. so tomorrow we will now set, set up the ar and then we will now see the invoice as well as credit memo in ar much it is not completed Then go the go to the manager orders and then if you give a refresh, what happens? It will be getting up there now. Fine, click on refresh. It will be saying returned. Fine, it is not delivered. It is not saying. And then invoice is started, but it will not fail. The X mark will be coming because AR is not set. So AR is not set. So it will not start an invoice process, but it will not with the, with the X mark. It will not. Here workflow customization is really very very horrible. And then it has been given to the technical, not technical team, but the functional team actually. I don't know why they have done like this. 
my dear old and uh, uh, i uh, we practically speaking in our company only technical team is doing it no functional guy will be touching it actually i think on that now it will not say create invoice is failed actually credit billing is failed because yeah so we will not set up tomorrow and then we will not see both the invoice and credit memo coming up on this place no? invoice and credit memo coming up on this so this completes a basic shipping and then after setting up a ar what happens we will not see the invoice and credit memo and then afterwards we will not go to the advanced shipping part clear any doubts uh, gone fast actually uh, <laughs> <laughs> i got very fast <laughs> no no the thing is uh, i think they have uh, they are going for a demo instance and they are uh, they have asked oracle to uh, close this instance okay this test oh, instance oh, oh. this instance will be closed when when are they going to do it no i think they have sent a mail i don't know when it is going to be mm. uh, so they have asked for a demo instance from oracle oh ho 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 fine this will be closed okay. actually this is not having a gop license actually fine mm. so because of which what about the back to back big my and then transfer i cannot show it in the system at all last mm -hmm. training also what happens we tried we failed and then afterwards when i inquired so it's not gop is not raised oh. <laughs> in a demo instance, yeah it will be having everything yeah it will be having everything so that is one advantage i don't know so when uh, they are, they'll take this out because the mail has already gone to our okay so, fine we'll know so because by the time i set up then afterwards what happens the setups are complete means what we can even start to work on this tomorrow we are going to set up ar and then if mm -hmm. that is set there afterwards we can even work on uh, what happened the demo instance the demo instance okay fine no problem okay. because fine. setting up we already gone done the complete enterprise structure creation and then if they are going to take away it will be very difficult mm -hmm. okay okay i am not demo the setting it okay thanks so tomorrow we will not see the ar and then see the invoice and credit memo in the ar actually uh, yeah ram prasad i gone very fast <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> not really sure yeah 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 okay <laughs> Run the record again and then see if something goes slowly and then they have gone very fast. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thanks.